Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another plug side chat. So something I wanted to talk about is I think we need to do away with the charging to 80% model. This is something that uh, Bjorn Nealand, I guess uh, Kia Bjorn, had mentioned when he was reviewing the uh, e Nero, but it's, it's true. I think a lot of automakers, uh, they just default to the charging to 80% model when that's not necessarily uh, the ideal charge cycle for various electric vehicles. But I do think that there's a, a very important metric to consider, and that's because electric vehicles can't just charge up to 100% of their range quickly as they can to say charging to 50 or 60 or 70% of their range. And that's really the main disadvantage that electric vehicles have when compared to something like an internal combustion engine vehicle or even a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle, which when they charge or refuel for the second time on a trip, well, they end up with 100% of their original stated range. And EV is always going to end up with some fraction of their original stated range, and it's sometimes significantly less range than your first time charge. I personally think we could use a different metric and it's something that could maybe be translated to different electric vehicles. And it can be used to recommend for you know new drivers or new EV drivers how far that they should be charging. Uh, to Tesla's credit, they don't really fall into this. They actually sort of instruct their drivers based on the route planning and trip planning how long they should be charging. But basically every other automaker right now just sets that 80% bar and it's not necessarily a convenient line to be reaching. You know, you take something like the Bolt EV or the uh, Kona Electric or the Nero EV, all of those vehicles take about an hour to go from zero to 80%, but you'll go to 60 or 70% in 30 to 40 minutes. That's a significant time savings just to gain an extra 10 to 15%, it doesn't make any sense to do that. And so the metric that I would recommend is something that I would call a second charge range or probably subsequent charge range because it really applies to your third and fourth and fifth charging stops as well. But it's going to be somewhat unique to the vehicle. And you could just pick a number out of the hat, but my recommendation would be the point at which your charging rate drops below half of what your peak charging rate would be. So certain vehicles like the Bolt EV or the Model 3, that number comes very early, right? 60% uh, maybe of your battery or 65% of your battery. Hyundai and Kia, they've been able to push that out with some of their newer EVs to about 70 to 75% and some of the small battery vehicles and the new Audi e-tron, well, you know, they push it out to about 80%. So something like the Hyundai Ioniq Electric right now, it can charge basically full power up to 80%. So the problem with it is, of course, it's such a short range vehicle that it's SCR, subsequent charge range, is only 100 miles out of that 124 miles. Something like the Audi e-tron, where it's 200 miles of total range, well, you're only ending up with 160 miles after reaching 80%. But something like the Bolt EV, where that SCR would hit about 65%, well, now you're looking at about 150 miles between DC fast charges, your subsequent uh, charging cycle. So uh, I think that's a much more valuable metric. You compare something like the Bolt EV and the Nero EV where they have very similar ranges, but Kia did push out their charging rate just a little bit farther, about five to 10% further. Well, in that case, you know, with the Bolt EV, it's about 150, 155 miles would be this SCR, the subsequent charge range, where the Kia Nero EV, it would be about 165 to 170 miles. Uh, maybe as much as 180 miles. And then, of course, something like the Hyundai Kona Electric, which is more efficient but has a similar profile to the Nero EV, while its SCR is close to 200 miles. 
And I think this is a, a very valuable metric that could be used to help compare vehicles. Most people are okay with a 20 to 30 to maybe even a 40 minute stop, uh, especially if it's for something like a meal or whatnot. But when you start asking people to stop for 50 minutes or an hour or an hour and 10 minutes, just so you can hit that bar, just so you can hit 80%, it starts to make the uh, trips a little less convenient and you know, you can maybe find a one hour stop along a four, five, 600 mile drive, but the rest of your stops, you're probably going to want to keep relatively short just to keep the trip time short, but also to fit the needs of those stops. Usually it's just stretching your legs, grabbing a snack, grabbing a drink, using the bathroom, and that's about it. You don't need to be stopping for more than 30 to 40 minutes every single time. Uh, some people prefer 20 minute stops, but the point is you want to find that cutoff where it's no longer worth your time to continue charging. And I think that just carrying over this old model that really applied to small battery electric vehicles with high power densities, uh, you know, it doesn't work unless you're something like an Audi e-tron where you are actually maintaining your fastest charge time up to 80%. It sets the wrong standard and new drivers just get confused by it thinking that that's the point at which they should stop charging. Again, it's going to be unique for each vehicle, but I also think it's something that provides a valuable uh, comparison. So when you're cross shopping vehicles and you want to know which one is going to be most effective for your trips, well, if you're someone who doesn't mind stopping every two hours between charging stops, something like the Bolt EV might be fine. But if you're someone who you know wants to be able to drive three to four hours between stops, you might want something like the Hyundai Kona Electric, especially if the other factors that are differentiating the two vehicles aren't important. So I think it's just one more metric that's going to allow consumers to make a more informed decision about which electric vehicle works best for them. Let me know what you think. Do you think this SCR, this subsequent charge range is a valuable metric, something that you would use to cross shop vehicles, something that you think should be catered to each vehicle? Do you think that the Bolt EV should probably be telling owners to stop charging by 70% battery if they're on a DC fast charger? Not really telling them to stop, but indicating that it might be advisable for them to do so. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. And Thank you for watching.